Hey ladies, I have a special guest with us today and I'm really excited to introduce her to you. I think that you're really going to enjoy this. This is Ilana Rontea. And Ilana is actually a friend of mine as well. Um, we met probably, I think we've been friends, what, about mm, less than a year now. Um, Ilana has had an extremely interesting life. Um, she was one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and she left, I don't know how long ago, when she was a teenager, she'll tell you the story, when she was young, actually, I think it was in her 20s, in your 20s, um, but she's lived in 12 countries, across three continents, so she's traveled everywhere, she's traveled extensively, but what I love about you is that you are a free spirit that plays by your own rules, and mm -hmm. your top three values I know meet and align with mine for sure. Freedom, authenticity, and connection. And so um, what I'd like to do today is just show everyone how what we've learned about leaving the organization, especially as women, and not being able to become, um, you know, independent, and happy at the same time. That's just, that's just not true. So um, that's kind of what I, I wanted to talk about today. Um, I guess to start with, what is your story, the background about you being a witness? Thanks so much for having me, Lori. It's such a pleasure. Um, I know when you and I first met, you were just starting this channel. So I thought it was a really brilliant idea I think um, ladies who want to leave the organization need as many resources and support as possible. So I applaud you for taking this uh, courageous step because it really is. So my story, um, I left when I was around 21. So it's been 35 years, more than 35 years. Um, my, my background is a little bit different though because I wasn't born as a witness. So my first 10 formative years were spent outside um, in a communist country, as a matter of fact. Um, so my parents um, had a huge library, which I devoured. <laughs> so I, I did a lot of learning uh, beforehand. And by the time we were living, uh, we had left uh, um, my country of origin and we had emigrated to Israel. And it was when we were in Israel that we were contacted by American Jehovah's Witnesses missionaries. So my parents were always looking for some sort of spiritual belief system they could anchor onto uh, because they were both agnostic. Um, they weren't uh, interested in religion. They didn't really feel that they resonated with that, but they were looking for something. So when the witnesses showed up at the door, it was kind of like they were, <laughs> they were primed for it. Right. Yeah. Um, and they liked, you know, they liked to study, they were curious and, you know, the, the vision that the witnesses uh, presented was something that was very interesting to my parents. Um, so, so they started to study and then we eventually emigrated to Canada and they got baptized and, you know, I was just taken along with the ride for the ride. Right. So, so that's kind of how it happened for me. So how old were you then when, when they... When they actually ten. studied 10, okay. Yeah. And actually, when, when you think about it, 10 years old, you're just coming into the, to the preteen going into the, to those years. So you, you basically were yeah. in the organization all the way through your teen years into your early twenties. Yes. yes. Wow. Okay. Now, so now it, was, it was a little bit different because, you know, my, my parents weren't totally insisting that I have no friends outside. So the way that they imper interpreted the JW teachings were not as strict. Mm -hmm. So I, I always had friends on the outside and they never restricted me from reading material I wanted to read. Um, and I read a lot. Um, English was my favorite subject. So I was, I was an A student. And so my mind was always occupied with other things. This wasn't like just the tiny box that unfortunately most JWs live in. And, you know, reading some of the magazines, I remember thinking, this is like really one-sided, you know, it's very slanted, like the material is so slanted. And I had friends outside, so I knew not everybody was, you know, a drug addict and stuff. 
Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you saw it at a young age, but do you feel like I you're just I saw that that perception was skewed. Like I, I saw that was not giving the whole picture. Yeah. Um, so do you think your parents? I mean, were they really devoted, or like you said, were they just looking for something and they were comfortable where they were at? I mean, they they kind of they, they didn't they didn't insist that you follow exactly. You yeah. know, what they were doing, so... So, so they, they were not fanatical. Yeah. They were not fanatical. Which and they, they always maintained, yes, absolutely, especially my dad. They maintained, they maintained balance and allowed me to develop myself as a person. I mean, you know, there were many times I, I got out of going to the meetings because, you know, I just didn't feel like it and I would make an excuse and they never, never really, really pushed me. Um, but, you know, when I, when I left... Um, so, so let me talk about it, that a little bit. Um, what ended up happening is that um, I went to university because that was a given. So there wasn't, you know, <laughs> there wasn't any discussion about should she, shouldn't. It was like, yeah, definitely. Oh, my goodness. Well, because both my parents were intellectuals. So for them, going to university was, was you know, a door opening for your future. Right. So I started university and then, and then my dad got an opportunity to work overseas. So my parents ended up leaving me and I was going to university and I was living like four blocks away from my campus. And I convinced them that they could go. I had a friend move in with me so that I wasn't alone. Mm -hmm. So that they were very nervous about leaving. I was 19, but they still, you know, it was the best decision that they could make given our circumstances at the time. So during this process, while they were away and I was studying university, I started to really expand. My, my mind started to really, really grow. And I started to study philosophy and psychology and mythology, oh all of them, right? <laughs> really, <laughs> really mind expanding yeah. uh, courses. And so- You can't um, stay asleep yeah. when you're exactly. studying those things, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So after about a year or two of this, I started to realize that you know, I was still going to the meetings and I was- Oh, and doing... that was my question. You were still going to the meetings, even in university? I was on and off, you know, I, and, and there were times I really couldn't go because I did have, um, I did have studies and essays and things, but they had kind of left another, uh, a witness family to kind of watch over me. So they were always encouraging me and all of this stuff. So I, I, I just got a to the a point- a they were spying, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, right, right. So I didn't, I didn't like that intrusion. But I yeah. also got to the point where I realized that I was doing all these things, not because I wanted to or believed in it, but for my parents. Yeah. So I, I came to the point at the age of 21 where I thought, this is not how I want to live my life. This is not my belief system. And I'm no longer willing to do it for my parents or for anyone for that matter. And, you know, I realized that if I left, I, I realized I would lose all my friends in, in the JW organization, number one. And number two, um, I was really scared they would throw me out of the house. Right? I was really worried they would, you know, sure. reject me and abandon me, which is, of course, what ends up happening a lot of the time. Now, did you, let so me, I, did, I, you, did you get baptized? Yeah. Were you baptized at all? Yes, yes. I was at 17. Okay. Not not because they pushed me. But I was I was spending a lot of time with witness kids at the time and there was there was a lot of I don't there was this unspoken, you know, pressure. Right, like a camaraderie almost. You yeah. want to be part exactly. of what everybody else is doing. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Sure. Exactly. So at that point I realized that if I wanted to leave, um, and I'm I'm very much kind of like um I have strong beliefs. So if I'm going to take a course of action, I'm going to really do it. So for me, fading away or all this, that wasn't really an option. Mm. Um, for me, it had to be kind of like, I'm done with this. Cut and dry. And I'm, yeah, and I'm leaving. So I wrote a letter to the organization uh, disassociating myself. And I was very clear about it. So I was 21. But my parents didn't know yet because they were overseas and I didn't feel it was something that I wanted to tell them on the phone. Right. 
Uh, and in those days, we didn't have video calls. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. No. no. So no, I, I waited not. until, exactly. So I waited until I saw them in person and I told them. And it was very difficult uh, because yeah. my mother took it personally. I was rejecting her values. And this is how most witnesses see it. When family members leave, Absolutely. you are rejecting God and the yeah. values and they take it very personally and it becomes this huge drama. Right. So I was kind of anticipating that for my mother. Um, but my father really surprised me. And what he said to me was, um, it must have taken you a lot of courage to do this. I really admire you for that courage because wow. you are being true to yourself. And he said to me, I know there are a lot of other witness kids in the congregation who feel like you do, but they would never have the courage to do what you did. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I he think told he was, you uh, what was in, inside of him, the kind of person that yes. he really is. He's, he's a very authentic. Yeah. I know we've talked about your dad. Yeah. Before. Yeah. And, and, you know, so I had his support. Of course, there was a lot of tears and, and there was a lot of, you know, it was very difficult to do because I was choosing a different path. But I also told them that didn't change me from who I was. And, and this is, this is where the thing is that um, you're still the same person. You have just chosen to walk a different path because this path didn't resonate and it wasn't the right one for you. Right. And the, and the, the bottom line is the way they look at it, like you said, they take it personally as almost like an attack on them or the family. Yes. And we're just, yes. we're, we're each individual people. We should be allowed to, when we think something differently or feel something differently, we should be allowed to go explore that. You know, I Absolutely. mean, you know, the way I look at life and I think a lot of people do is as long as you're not hurting someone else or you're not hurting yourself, which they like to tell you that once you leave, like you kind of mentioned, you're going to be a drug addict or you're going to get into all this awful, you know, and that just doesn't, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Sure, it happens, but it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that you left the organization. Exactly. You know, people can exactly. leave other organizations and, and, you know, the circumstances may get them down or whatever. But especially with us, when we leave and we're ostracized, like you said, you lost all your friends and... You know, yeah. thank goodness, though, your your mom, I mean, your dad especially didn't stop the relationship with you. But anyway, go ahead. No, and I'm sure he was instrumental in convincing my mother to maintain the relationship. It sounds like it, yeah. Yeah. So so, so I had I had that advantage. And, you know, my, they, they were still away. They were away for five years in total. So I had time to start to grow into who I needed to become. And I so I started... So I wasn't, so I want to make sure that people understand I wasn't leaving God and I wasn't leaving my belief in God because this was something else my mother said to me, you're abandoning God. And I was like, yeah. no, yeah. I am leaving a particular lifestyle right. that doesn't agree with me. This is not how I want to live. Right. And, and a lot of it had to do with how restricted it was because, you know, I'm really a free spirit and I need to be able to explore life. And to me, that's very important. So I began this, this 35 year journey of spiritual exploration. And what I mean by that is that I started to read books and I started to explore material that talked more about um, God in a different way. So we were taught, you know, this patriarchal, a pyramid shape, you know, we yep. have God at the top and Jesus and all of this. And some of the teachings I started to read about talk about a different relationship with God. And it's not like he's somewhere out there and he's unreachable and you're such a sinful person and you have no right to even, you know, right. make yourself into a worm, right? Right. So the, 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 the teachings I started to read about were a lot more empowering. Um, and I know you and I have talked about this. Yep. You know, the first book I read that really hit me like a two by four yeah. <laughs> was uh, Conversations with God. Yeah. And you because one of the me, things, and that was the first one I read. That's that right. Changed that's right. My life. Yeah. Yeah. Because one of the reasons I left is because of the genocidal, angry, jealous, yes. pissed off God in the Old Testament, right? Exactly. I thought, this cannot be God. This, to me, this is not what 
the creator energy is. So when I read Conversations with God, it was such an eye opener because it finally presented me with a vision of divinity that I could relate to. It presented the creator as, um, as a partner collaborating with us in our lives, right. co-creating with us and that we are each a facet of the divine. I mean, all of these ideas were so like <laughs> foreign. Yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah at first, Astonishing. yeah, and yeah. I mean, I did the same thing. You, you introduced me to. I mean, I've grown spiritually leaps and bounds in the last year. But you have you and I yeah. met, and you told me about different books and different. You know, I mean, you you were always open to me asking you questions, which I did a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, how'd you figure this out? And how'd you find this? And what, you know, and it was always, a well, you know, I read this book or, or I looked into this or whatever. And so some of the things that you did, I did look into as well, which Conversations with God is, you know, a trilogy. So I read one and two. I have not read That's three, right. but I did want, I do want to read three. I have it. Um, and yeah, it changed everything. In fact, they made a movie. I believe Conversations with God one is a movie. Um, oh wow! I didn't know that. Yeah, it is a movie. I think it's it's got to be one. They haven't done anything with two, but yes, we did see it. And um, Neil Neil Donald Walsh, I believe, is his name. Yeah, it's a good yes, movie. He's and awesome. I mean, he was homeless. He there was it's, it's really an amazing story to watch it on on the screen. So but it was yeah. based on his life. Yes, based on okay, that book yes, because, and and how he found. Yeah. Yes, yes, yep. It's yeah, really, it's really a good movie. Yeah, we watched it. I, I don't re remember if it was on like Netflix or Amazon or whatever, but it's well, it's worth watching, especially Absolutely. with the books. Yeah, but I, I, mean, I yeah. think what I loved the most about it was that it showed that we as humans are actually empowered, depending on how we look at things and how we relate to divinity. Because unfortunately, you know, most religions view humans as inferior and flawed and sinful and a lot of very negative things. Mm -hmm. um, this presented a vision of empowerment where you actually have the choice how you live your life through how you respond to things. So yes, circumstances happen to us that are unforeseen. And the only, you know, the, the, where the free will comes in is how we handle our responses to those circumstances. Right. And, and it's always this interplay be between the universe and ourselves. And it is co-creative. If we can see it that way, and if we can approach our lives that way, as opposed to abasing ourselves and making ourselves into non-entities of zero importance. Right. Which is what and organized this, religion is all about. Is And especially for women, it is even more so. Exactly. Right? Yes. Because women are really viewed as second class citizens. Absolutely. And basically baby makers. Yes. Um, and if you want to have a different path and if you want to explore yourself as an individual, a self actualizing human being, regardless of your gender, uh, most religions don't encourage that of women. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's, the, the term free spirited doesn't exist in organized religion. Yeah. <laughs> no. And I mean, it's I always, women. yeah, right. And I mean, I always felt like that too. I mean, you know, you know how long I was in, you know, 55 years and I always felt that way. You know, I do, I am free spirited and I know that that's termed rebellious. You're not yes. free spirited, you're rebellious, you know? And so we did, we didn't get to, look into anything that we remotely interested in, you know, us at all, except for what they gave us. Right. Okay. And so, you know, if, if, you, if you think about it, you know, um, why would a creator make beings with free will and all sorts of abilities and, and uh, opportunities and force them to exactly. live in one particular way? And if you stray out of that, your head across the head, why would that make any sense in any real world? This is no. this is dogma. This is complete right. dogma and that's that is what, meant to control. I completely agree with you. That's that's what I always what even as a child I, I couldn't understand 
well, no, you're allowed to do things, but why would you is the way they put it. You know, you're allowed to, let's just even use holidays. Well, sure, you can celebrate Christmas if you want, but why would you want to displease God? Right. Jehovah? right. Why would you want to do that? And then immediately you're feeling like, oh, great, I'm, I'm a bad person for wanting to do that. So it's the way they word it. It's, it's definitely dogma. It's definitely indoctrination. And you're told over and over again, sure, you can if you want to, but why would you want to, you know? And, but that's the, the picture that's painted of God in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Sure, go ahead and do what you want to do, but I'm going to destroy you if you do what you want to do. <laughs> so, right? Or punish you. I mean, the, some of the things in the Bible that happened were just unbelievable to me, you know, um, the punishments. Yeah. I I think for me as a child, the biggest thing that really, one of the biggest things that really bothered me, there were several stories that did was King David when, when, okay, well, I'm going to kill the baby. To me, that was, I couldn't even get over that. I I remember that as a little girl because I always wanted children, always. I always wanted, you know, kids and grandkids and and that story just, I couldn't, I just couldn't wrap my mind around why would, why would a, a loving God kill a baby just because... The mom and dad did yeah. something wrong and yeah. he did in the bible you know that's why i too don't believe i mean that it's all fear-mongering you know it's not so so i was just going to say that fear guilt and shame were the three emotions that control and that are being used in very subtle ways to control people's behaviors and thought patterns so we as humans and especially we as women are not allowed to expand and grow and become the powerful beings that we actually are. And it's not until you leave and you start exploring what it is that you can do with your life that you see that difference and and how small your existence was when you were part of that very controlling um, belief system. Yeah, so so once once I left and, and I was free to explore everything, I started to read these books and I started to see how you can actually live. And so the rest of my life has been about expansion and growth and exploration. And the fact that I'm a woman has never held me back because that doesn't mean anything to me. So so now I work to help other women to see that they have enormous potential that is often untapped. And so much of it is kept under wraps because of this um, negative programming that we are all subjected to. And, and in high cult, you know, high, high control religions, even more so, even more so. Absolutely. And, you know, you just, when you mentioned um, the, the different areas of spirituality that you've gotten into, I know that growing up, I always heard that anything to do with the spirit world at all is either evil, demonic, scary. Um, for mm-hmm. instance, um, I have a, where is my, here it is. I have a pendulum. I love my pendulum. Mm-hmm. When you hear pendulum, when you're a witness, you automatically see this little, this star of Satan and this, you know, it's, it's awful. And, the, and, yeah. and I'm using this for, as an example to, to tell everybody how there's nothing wrong with this. And I'll tell you why I tested it on myself when I first got this and learn that it works with your own unconscious mind. You're, you're, it, it, you literally, you, yeah, the yes and the no. Exactly. You're asking questions like, um, am I a female? And it'll say yes. Is my name Lori? Yes. Is my name Alana? No. And it'll do it. I'm not talking out loud. I'm not asking anything out loud. This is all in my mind. This is my own unconscious mind. This is just one thing out of several that I'm I'm going to ask you about too um tarot cards um I can't even think of all of everything spiritual that are simply communications with not anything evil but archangels and you know just like when we were the spirit with, world right but I mean it, for the the purpose of people that are watching that that are, are scared of the term spirit mm-hmm. world Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a scary place. It's a wonderful place. It's a peaceful place. I've never been. And these are ne- not negative energies at whatsoever. all. 
not at all. Exactly, quite the opposite. Well, and it's very similar to what they teach you about, you know, Jehovah, Jesus, the angels. That's the spirit world as well. It's the same exactly. thing, except for we don't, now that we're away from, from the organized, I, I hate to say fear-mongering all the time, but it's the only term I can think of, really, is it's a, it's a wonderful place. It's a wonderful um, feeling to, to know that you can get answers in your own mind. You know, we don't sit around and chant out loud all day, but there's been several times when I have spoken to different archangels or whatever, yeah. and it's still the spirit yeah. world, and it, there's nothing wrong with it. So that's kind of one of that's one of the um, the things that I learned from from you when when I first met you was you know, and I, I would ask you so many questions. You know, how did you know this, and how did you know how to do that, and you you kind of taught <laughs> me, you know, to and and it opened up my mind so much because I'd never explored anything before because i was afraid i was always so afraid of, of it and it's not scary so i mean talk about how you actually i know you you know i know you've kind of touched on how you got into the things that you're that you've learned over the years about spirituality in that sense not religious spirituality yeah um, what was the the big I guess it wasn't really a big turn for you because you, you just kind of kept reading and, and, and growing on that, mm -hmm. which is what I'm doing. So th there was a term that I read that really, maybe that was my first awakening, real awakening. And it said that we are spirit beings having a human experience. And so that's become kind of like the cornerstone of my belief systems, which, which means that we're not just this flesh and blood and we're not a bunch of impulses and we're not just our ego mind but we're something beyond that and and this part of ourselves is, is the eternal part that is connected to divinity at all times it is the spark of the divine and that it will continue even after this physical body um, disappears and that it goes on to reincarnate in different lives and different uh, planets and dimensions and universes so this is this is all really big stuff right and these are all the questions that we ask as humans what happens to us when we die um will we see our loved ones again you know so you know the witnesses have a particular vision that they hold forth about you know everlasting life right on this planet and so what i find is that um i see a lot of uh witnesses who leave and they leave that belief system behind but they don't have anything else to anchor to yes Yes. So that makes it much more difficult to transition outside because right. most people are shunned and they lose their support network and they lose their God. They're you know, lost. Right? They're kind of lost. Exactly. Exactly. So when you identify specifically and solely with your physical self, I can see very well why you would get lost and, and every, nothing would make sense anymore, right? Then because it's only this, this yeah. life is the only thing you're hanging on to. And that's what exactly. I did. I want to just interject. What I did exactly. when I first woke up is realized how my age, I realized, oh my goodness, I'm 50, at the time 56 and I don't have that, my, like I don't have my whole life anymore. I'm, I'm in the last third you know of my life and so yeah. now what and so in talking to you and in reading and and i mean it just opened my mind and i mean the peace and the calm that i have now is is well i mean i am able to come off medication i was on medication i was on anti-anxieties antidepressants yeah. Yeah. and literally yeah. it has made such a difference in me understanding that in simple terms, to put it, we are energy. We're in, and Absolutely. you cannot destroy energy. Um, so where everything does it go? in the universe is energy, right? And just and it cannot be destroyed. Spirit. So where exactly. does it go? I mean, it's really exactly. simple when you get scientific about it. You know, you don't even have to get too deep into it to realize that it, it doesn't go away. So that's kind of what you know where where we base our spirituality around and, and talking about you know what you just got done saying about having a, a an experience and you're you know we're we're actually souls or energy 
or you know, right. having an experience in this body. Because without that energy, in this physical realm. the body's gone. That's right. So. so uh, the second book that I read, which you, of course you know about, is um, <laughs> is called Journey of Souls yes. by Dr. Michael oh. Newton, right? So that was that like... That was the, the pivotal, I mean, point in my... That's right. I remember where I started reading the very first chapter. I remember where I was. Yeah. It was in a, When you told me about that book, that yeah. was the book that changed me. That was That was the book. Yep. So, so just to give an introduction about that book, which was very seminal for me also, um, Dr. Newton um, had a number of patients and he used past life regressions to help them deal with things like phobias and fears and all sorts of other issues. So he realized that he would regress his patients to other lives and then they would die and they would go to this other realm that was spiritual. And then they would meet with their guides and decide what to do about their next life and what lessons to learn. And he developed this cosmology of the soul, um, which is based on hundreds of interviews. And he synthesized it and he organized it and he presented this. And when I read this, I realized that there is structure, there is organization, and everything does make sense once you start to look at it from that perspective. So it really shifted everything for me. And I realized that this is one existence in an eternal one. This is a small drop in the bucket. And so from then on, my life really started to change enormously because I no longer identified so much with my physical body and my ego mind, but there was this higher self yeah. that I started to connect to. And that's what I was thinking when I was just saying that I woke up and I realized I was 56. Once I started to learn what you just got done explaining yeah. it didn't matter to me anymore because i realized that i i'm here for a purpose and i am i'm definitely following the path that i was supposed to follow and when i realized that it became pretty easy i i hate to say really easy because i mean yeah sure i mean i i i lost my entire family everybody knows that and friends and, and everything. Um, so I can't say that it was that it's easy losing people. But for me, it was relatively easy considering my age. But even my husband says now, this is the only thing that makes sense. You know, he wasn't always a witness. He was only a witness since we met and got married. And it never made sense to him. Like you said, it, he, there was too many inconsistencies yeah. and he saw, but, you know, he stayed because we were in it and whatever. Um, but he's very scientific. And so once he learned what I was learning and he read Michael Newton's book as well, Journey of Souls. Mm -hmm. And as soon mm -hmm. as he finished it, he looked at me and he said, this, this makes so much sense. It just makes right. so much sense. Right. And that's how I felt. I felt like everything yeah. finally came together because my whole life, nothing made sense. You know, I know you went off to university and you were able to study more and more, you know, the older you got. But for me, I stayed where you said you weren't, in, in that little box. And so mm -hmm. once you opened, and I mean, I really give you a lot of credit for this because I'm, I'm so grateful that we became friends. And I do believe that <laughs> um, we'll talk about our, our Alana's little Facebook group, um, uh, that, that we're in for women, spirituality group. But once I joined your group and you started posting so much, and of course you've got a lot of information in there that I started looking into. And I mean, then we worked together on other things too. That's yeah. when everything just started opening up for me. So, but so peacefully and, and calm. I don't, I don't have that fear and anxiety and that's why, mm -hmm. you know, I, and I wish everybody, yep. I know it's not for everybody to look into, um, but it exists regardless. <laughs> it's, but as soon as you can tap into, you know, like you said, it's, it's, how'd you word it? Um, you were saying something about feeling more, almost more powerful in knowing that. Well, that's right. So you are more empowered, be, well, from my empowered, perspective, yes, yes, yeah. right? Yeah. Because I don't identify myself solely with this physical existence on this planet at this moment. I know there's so much more after. Right. So all the dramas and all the um, all the stuff, all the all, all the stuff that goes on, is 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 there, but it's not as impactful. 
powerful because I just view it differently. So, th so this leads me to talk about the next subject which you and I have talked about before, which is trusting your intuition. And this is something else that we're not taught to do in, in you know, highly controlling religion. Exactly. Because your intuition is your guidance system yep. that is connected to the divine at all times. And once you start to learn how to listen to it and really follow its messages, it does not lead you astray ever. Ever. It's just learning which voice to listen to and learning to see synchronicities which are events that are seemingly random, but they do have a connection to you. It's almost like deciphering a puzzle. Once you start to do that, you will see your life flow in a different way. And this is what you're talking about. Right. Your life is now in flow because you're aligned with your divine purpose and you've connected to um, the spiritual beings that are there to help you, your spirit guides and, and the angels and so on. And having that connection gives you this incredible support that comes from another place and you feel it inside of you it's, it's difficult to explain in, in words right it is but it's hard definitely yeah. There. Yeah, it's, it's, there. There. it's there yeah for sure yeah no i um like i said i i wish i wish everybody could 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 go through that experience um not everybody wants to and i think they get burned out of anything that even remotely resembles religion at all and so spirituality mm -hmm. for them has that um bad feeling or bad connotation it. it does it, yeah. it and um yeah. and it's not you know you you, exactly. you you have to yeah you have to have, well but you have to have an open mind and be and allow yourself to get out of that little box that you've been stuck in yeah. that religion put you on i think what happens yeah. is you either go a lot of a lot of people end up like you were saying they become either agnostic or atheist because they don't want anything to do with it you know look i don't right. i don't want to deal with it at all so they don't look into anything else and had i stayed there because i was headed that way i was i i became agnostic at first um mm -hmm. you can't prove it and you can't disprove it right i i I didn't really, you know, the Bible was not jiving for me anymore because there was too many inconsistencies that they keep explaining as, oh, well, mm, let Jehovah take care of that was what we usually got. And so right. I did get to a point where I would read the Bible and go, you know, say to myself, this just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense though. It's just not making sense. So if you don't take it any farther and had I not at the time met you, um, I don't know. I'm not sure what, what, how, where my life would have, I'm sure eventually it would have gotten to that point because I was always very intrigued with, um, actually the, um, the Eastern culture, you know, Lots India. Yeah. yeah I, I was very, and, and the chakras and the, I've always been really intrigued by that. Even, even in years past, I just always thought it was kind of a, you know, a no, no almost like a um, taboo, oh. you know, you know, they always yeah. kind of make it dark and it's not, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you're, mm -hmm. I mean, that's an actual electrical system in your body. It's an actual physical thing that gets out of alignment, you know, and they, want, and they want to explain it away as being dark or scary or it's not, you know, but I mean, yeah. again, I, 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 I wish that everybody would just just look into, especially us women, when, you know, we get to that point, just pick up the books. I'm going to put the books in the links that we're talking yeah. about. And yeah. also so, I want to put your, um, go ahead. I was, I was going to say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I was just going to say, well, um, the, I just want to explain that your spiritual path is not dictated by anyone but yourself. Right. Um, what I'm talking about is resources to explore. But from my perspective, following a guru or a teacher or following a path somebody else has set is not the right way to go. Um, you know, I've done enormous amounts of reading in all sorts of subjects, and I have put together my own belief system that resonates with me internally. So it's, it's always good to use your inner guidance and intuition to find out what works for you. And that's why no two paths are alike. And there is no one path. It is a myriad of paths 
to the same goal, which is to connect you to your higher self and to divinity, which we're, where we all come from. And that's the entire purpose of having a spiritual life is to take you out of the drama, out of the ego, out of the physical that really um, ties us down here, our, our emotions that hijack us, our pain and traumas, to take you outside of that and remind you of your greater divine existence. To me, that is the purpose of spiritual path. Okay, um, for the audience, it, d give, d explain a little bit about higher self. I mean, I know what higher self is, but um, so, that's one of those mm, things that sounds um, right. hokey pokey to people. So, and it's not. Right. <laughs> yeah. So if you read the uh, Michael Newton book, the, the higher self is that part of you that remains in the spirit realm and does not incarnate. This is a part of you and it's called the higher self because it doesn't descend into the body and incarnate. It is always in connection with divinity. It is always in that realm. And the higher self, and, and there's different theories about who it is. I've read some theories that say that it's ourselves at a much more evolved state, uh, far, far into another uh, future. But that's not really important. What's important is that the higher self is always trying to communicate with us and help us and guide us. So we, in, instead of having uh, guidance from you know the governing body, right? We each actually have internal guidance that comes through us through our intuition and, and even through uh, different tools like the tarot. And of course, I know there's a lot of fear about tarot and yeah. tarot readings and this kind of thing. And again, you know, just to address that, tarot cards are um, actually connected to the unconscious mind yep. and they are archetypal energies that everyone can relate to and that are alive in everyone's psyche but the organization has demonized anything yes. that is not to do with it and that is encouraging you to connect to your real divine inside guidance i can't stress how important it is this is your gps for life right so anything that could get you into that direction and connect you to your higher self to your inner guidance has been demonized and has been made to seem like it's really scary right so, so again, the, the higher self is always in the spirit realm and is trying to guide us and it never leaves. So when we leave this body, we go back and we reconnect to it on the other side. And then other things happen. We, just, we have a life review and then we decide where we want to go from there, what we want to learn and so on and so forth. That's a, that's a conversation of a whole other video. <laughs> it is. And it, I mean, even just you talking about it though, it, it's, it's funny because I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about what someone that is still very in the organization would think about our conversation and i'm thinking about what i would think of would have thought about it 15 years ago 10 years ago um i would have been afraid like oh my yeah. goodness what has Lori gotten herself into she's gone so far away from the truth not no i mean it's not a scary thing um you're talking about your higher self okay this so this is what i learned and I don't remember which book it came from. It might have been Michael Newton where I first really discovered this. I know you've posted a lot in our Facebook group that I've learned from too. And it might have been one of your explanations of it. I don't remember, but I know I went on to read about it. Is that the, you know, God or the source of energy mm -hmm. that created, you know, every everything really. Um, it's, it's, it's more of an extension so, you know, there's a source energy and then basically the source energy lives through all these extensions, which are all of us and everything exactly. that's been created. So he's just living experiences, you know, wherever he wants to be or she, I don't, it's not, doesn't mm -hmm. have gender, but. There's no gender, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, um, when you are a connection then your higher self is up here with him still connected to him still connected to you so this is not something that's separate from you it's not like okay your higher self is something totally different no it's not it is you it's your your own energy but like you were saying it's experienced you've experienced not this body but you've already experienced so many things we don't know what we've experienced we don't remember 
Um, so many lives. Yeah. But we don't, and we don't know the experiences that have been added to our exactly. higher self. Only our higher okay. self knows yeah. that. So I know it's a little, it's a little deep to think about yeah. if you've never thought about it before. But when I thought about it in those terms, it became less um, scary to me coming out of the organization and trying to learn more spirituality than religion. And then and the, the more- higher self is, is always focused on helping you evolve. So we are all in a process of continual evolution, not physical evolution, right. but spiritual evolution. Right. And how we do that is by um, dealing with our issues, because we all have all sorts of issues because of our upbringing and our programming. And once we're able to overcome some of these issues and some of the fears that we have, that frees us. That frees us to move forward spiritually and to start to look at things a little bit differently and to eventually want to be of service to others, but not from a place of obligation, but from a place of love. And, and this is the most important teaching that spirituality has to offer is that God is love, always yes. yeah. love, and everything comes from love. So that energy is not genocidal and it's not going to kill babies and it's not going to, you know, it's not going to put everything to the sword because they did something he didn't like. It doesn't right. work like that. That is a fallacy. And to stay in something because out of fear is so self-denying and self-sabotaging that it creates, it creates this constant anxiety and yes, can I call it pain? Deep inner oh, pain in absolutely. your heart. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it just doesn't feel right. No. No, because it's almost like trying to love your physical father if you saw him abusing not only you, but maybe other children, you know, and you're in his family. And, and that's the only way I can describe how I felt was we were constantly told that we had to have this um, respectful fear of God like you have your own father. But I kept thinking, but my father doesn't kill me if I want to do something and he doesn't beat me or hurt me or you know, me, yeah. yeah i'm not i'm not severely punished like that i mean sure when you get in trouble for crossing the street and your father tells you not to do certain things obviously but i was not i could not relate to that because i couldn't understand how an all loving god could be scarier and my dad was scary when I did something wrong, I will tell you. So it's not like I didn't re- respect him. I did. But how could this God be so much scarier to the point where um, I cowered at the thought of doing anything? It, it kept me up at night. And it, not even things that were bad or wrong, just anything that was out of alignment with what he wanted. And that's what got me thinking, too, is, well, if he's this all-powerful, loving God, that, I mean, he's he's it's because of him that all of this is here. Why does he need us to bow down to him and, and live in a box. fear him? But the fear, I don't want my children to fear me like that. When they're young, you want them to, it's, it's a, it's a respectful fear enough to say, I told you not to do this because it's bad for you. You know, don't cross the street. Don't hang out with that kid. He's into drugs, that kind of thing. But you don't want your children to fear you to the point that we are taught in organized religion that we should fear God. Exactly. And that was exactly. one of the things, even when I was younger, that I could not get through was why. And I used to ask him that when I would pray. Why do we have to worship like this? Why Why mm-hmm. do I have to feel mm-hmm. obligated to bow down to you? Like, Because mm-hmm. you don't really need me. So why do, you, why do I need... To feel like it's such an obligation and then I would feel horribly guilt oh the guilt the fear the oh I shouldn't have said that the shame right guilt, right and so shame. now that I woke up yeah. and I realized who he really is who we really are I don't feel any of that fear and it's absolutely very liberating it's ex- it's extremely liberating to say I'm okay who I am not only am I okay, I'm okay I love myself I, I really love yes. life and I I've never yeah. said that my whole life until I learned yeah. spirituality never was able to say I actually yeah. not only like myself but I love myself 
And anyone that knows me knows that about me, you know, that it was very difficult for me. But, but your progress has been very quick because I think all the ingredients were already there percolating. We just needed more right. information and an outlet and you needed to allow yourself to experience life in this way. And this, this is what I want to encourage everyone who's watching um, right now is I, I want to tell you that leaving um, this religion does not mean that God has abandoned you. It does not mean that you do not love God. It has nothing to do with that. You are leaving a particular doctrine right. that you have been taught was the truth, but it is not true. It is actually the opposite because the truth will set you free. And the truth of our eternal existence is continual evolution and growth and expansion. And when you're involved in that process, there's nothing like it. It is like windows and opportunities and doors are constantly opening. And it's, it's an organic process, as you know, Lori. Oh, absolutely. That allows life to flow gently and easily. And so leaving this um, high control place, you might lose some people that you feel are very dear to you, but I think you will find something else of such enormous value and you will allow yourself to become who you need to become, that really amazing person with so much potential. And eventually you will be able to um, help other people and you will find a different community. There is a different type of community that you can connect to. And this is one of the reasons I created this Facebook group, which now has 500 women in it. If we talk about spirituality, we talk about empowerment and women's issues and self growth. It's a very supportive environment. Um, I'm hoping at some point we'll get offline and actually do some things in person. I would really love to meet so many oh, of the you. ladies in the group. Yeah. You know, I'm, the vibe in there is just so beautiful. And it, it is because is. we are so focused on yeah. these ideas, you know? I mean, 500 of us women in this group, which I, by the way, will post the link below. Any any um, of the women watching that want to join um, the group, it's a women's spirituality group on Facebook, so I'll, I'll drop the link. Um, but 500 women, and you would think that we'd have some disagreements or some negativity. I, I don't know about you, but I've not experienced it yet. I no. mean, I have not seen... I mean, everybody literally just seems like they are just so, we're just so open to each other, to learning and helping each other. And um, I've seen a lot of women recently that have joined the group just light up, you know, when they come in and they, oh, I didn't know that. Or they'll, they love the different posts that we make. Um, it's Alana's group, but she has asked me to help with some yes. postings and admin. So i I love, I love doing that. I've, I've been, I've been having a good time doing that, but it's, um, it's so, it's just so fun to see women, you know, wake up, well, wake up like I did, but you know, you saw me wake up. I didn't. <laughs> so I did, but not from the perspective, you know, of looking at, you know, the difference in how I was and the fear and the, the anguish. I think that's, that's the word, yes. it's, you know, it's yes. the pain is really an anguish, but some of the women that come in and learn, and we, a lot of them, a lot of them are actually ex witnesses. Yes. Now um, a lot of them are. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them. So it's a really nice group to be part of as, as a woman that's been a witness because there's a lot of women that you'll meet in this group. And it's, it's really, it's just, it's just a very, um, it's just a very calm, peaceful, and yet empowering group at the same time. Yes, and we, there are certain topics we don't talk about, and, and yes. that is because they are highly sensitive and could cause issues in religion, politics, um, COVID-19, whatever. Yes. But people can post and people can ask questions, and no one is ever bullied, minimized, or abused in any way. And to be honest, I haven't seen this in too many other groups. Um, but I'm very focused on keeping a very high vibe and keeping everything really supportive and really loving. Um, so definitely everyone is welcome. Um, we continue to discuss subjects that are of interest and sometimes people post questions that they have that they're unsure about. I've also created guides so that yeah. posts according to certain categories have been kept. 
uh, for future reference. Yeah, so there's a lot of references in there. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot. And, and people it's can, nice. build, can build on that. Um, so my own company that I created a year ago is about women's empowerment. And um, this is what I want to help every woman. Uh, it's called Phoenix on the Rise. And it's about the women reinventing themselves basically out of the ashes of their old lives. And that can happen in any number of different ways, um, whether it's through divorce or through a death or through leaving um, a complete lifestyle. Because when you leave a high um, powered cult, this is what you do. You're really in reinventing yourself in a completely different sure. way. Yeah. And, and there are things to overcome and things to learn. So this is why I created it, because I really believe that every woman can empower herself and become the best version of herself and 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 to have to like a, just a more joyful and and happy and calm as you said and peaceful life which is you know often missing but when you start to live authentically and when you discover your gifts and your abilities and your interests and which direction you really want to go into that just changes everything doesn't it Lori? oh i, I can't even you know yeah. it's just really hard to describe how how I mean, how calm and, and just, I, I mean, I really am just, and this sounds so, you know, cliche or whatever, that you, I'm just happy to get up. Every morning I'm happy. Even if it's not a great day, I've just yeah. learned that listening to my inner voice and becoming, um, like you were saying, just, just um, becoming more of a spiritual person brings a lot of peace. Learning who I am brought me a ton of peace because I actually had still the mentality when I left the organization of the us and them that that's something that you have to get over you have to you have to figure yeah. out how to get through that but I I actually felt like us and them even with with myself because I felt so physical everything was so physical to me so it was either a I'm going to be alive on this earth or I'm going to be dead so it was still the us and them mentality or the black and white, I should say, mentality of alive on the earth or dead. And that's it. That's yeah. not, that's, you know, once you learn that there's more than that, it becomes yeah. so peaceful. It, you can get through, for me, I'm speaking for myself. Not everybody can get through. I know there's a lot of different situations that, that women find themselves in, in besides the organization, like you were saying, divorce or you know, losing someone in death or whatever, it's, it's all difficult to get through. But for myself, it became effortless, I want to say, to just to learn and just keep learning. And I'm still learning. I have like six different books right now I'm reading at the same time <laughs> yeah. and going to get my master's certification in life coaching. So I'm doing a lot, but um, it's been an absolute amazing journey this last year i mean yeah. i would not trade where i am for anything and i've told you before that i was so grateful that you helped me so much because with all the questions that i had i know in the very beginning it was you know all these questions i would type to you and the, that <laughs> was it okay because to me i just i think so for me it was such a joy to see you flexing your wings and, and stretching and, and learning. And, and you're, you're like a sponge, you know, your, your thirst for knowledge and information is so powerful and it's so beautiful to watch you blossom. It's been really, it's been a real privilege. And that's why I invited you to uh, be the admin in the group with me because you have so much to offer and you have been learning at such an incredible pace and you have lots to share. And so there, there's no comparison to the person that, someone can become when they come out of their box. Oh, it's, it's the difference yeah. between living in a box and, and becoming a bird and stretching your wings. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, that's the difference. Yeah. I mean, and you, and you really feel like you have a purpose when you wake up to that. I never felt like I really was, um, I hate to say the word worthy because I, but I mean, I, I guess it is. Want, that's as, what it's about. I, yeah. It's about. I, I felt pretty worthless as, as a woman, I felt very worthless. And just as a person, just as a human being, I felt very, I yeah. felt worthless yeah. probably most of my life. And after a while that you get to the point where when you feel that way, you can't see worth in a whole lot of anything else either. 
for me. And so I was kind of at just my wits end when I, when I finally realized what was going on in the organization and I woke up, I found myself a little bit lost, you know, where do I go? What do I do now? And I don't know if it was just perfect timing or what, but like you said, I was ready. I was so ready to just learn and my mind just opened up. Um, I'm sure it helped that my husband has a very open mind too and is very scientific. Yes, so he was very, very supportive and enjoys learning what I've been learning too. So that's really been amazing. But we would love it if you would join our group, ladies. I will put the link below. Absolutely. And I'm also yeah. going to link um, Phoenix on the Rise. And there are some interesting blog posts that uh, people might enjoy reading, which would yes. also give them more information, open them up a little bit more. Again, this is everything is at your own pace. There's there's no one pushing you from behind. There's no milestones. You do things at your own pace. But the last message I just wanna I just wanna give you is you do not have to live in the box. There is a much greater life outside of the box that you have been living in. And the spirituality is about self-empowerment as a human, as a woman, and as an eternal being. So please explore that and know that you are always loved always. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure having you on our channel. And I think this is going to really be a great video for all the women watching. Um, it I know my pleasure. Have... Thank you again, Lori. Yeah. Well, everybody have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And also, if you like the video, click like and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be having more interviews and I know I'll have Alana back on because if you have any <laughs> questions too, I was going to say, if you have yes, any questions definitely. for Alana, drop your questions below too, because maybe we'll make another um, video in the future about, you know, different questions that, sure. that, you know, that people have about, about what we were talking about today. So, so put I'd your be happy to. Below. Yeah, we'll definitely have you back on. Okay. Bye everybody. See you next time. Thanks Lori. Bye-bye.